certain things you just you just know that this is what you're gonna do. Uh, I decided I was gonna be a professional artist when I was in the second grade. Artists are people who are always creating and making something. You know, they, they and they usually do it, been doing it for, for a long time. I like to create flat things on paper, uh, a visual artist. I like to create figures. Uh, if you give me some abstract element to deal with, I'm gonna just keep working on it until I find the figure. And I'm, I'm gonna bring it home. Um, I, when I paint, it's figurative. When I draw, it's figurative. When I print, it's figurative. When I do an installation, uh, it's, it's about to figure. You make images by any means necessary. I'm doing basically digital collages and I make them in the computer. I don't know what they're gonna look like until uh, you get lucky, you know, you, you see God, you know, play that record backwards. <laughs> you, you, know, you know, you, and it happens, and you won, you won today, but a lot of times you don't win because you keep doing the same process over and over and over, the same technique over and over again, but you gotta change, change up on something. So I make images, you know, and hopefully, uh, over a period of time, when you put them all together, you can pick out a, a, a wide variety of different kinds of images, you know, figurative images. And uh, the impact of the images is a lot more important to me than the, the content. You know, I just want to grab your brain, you know, with just something that you saw. And you, maybe you take a little bit of time to figure out why. A lot of time is, is uh, out here shooting stuff, but not shooting a piece of art, a picture. You're shooting textures, or you're shooting skies, you're shooting objects that you, you know you're gonna use for something. And then in my, in my studio, uh, the model comes in, and usually uh, they get nude, and I paint them physically, paint the model. I used to paint with a lot of colors, but I narrowed everything down to just whitewashing. And because when you whitewash something, uh, it's easier for the textures that you're going to lay on top of them to show up. Sometimes it's a, I'll have a large quantity of a material. Like the last thing I dealt with was this jute, rope, burlap, or guinea sacks. And uh, somebody gave me uh, a bunch of rope. You know, we got a thing about that rope. It's the hanging rope, you know. <laughs> and we, uh, they gave me a large quantity of it. And, uh, Someone gave me another large quantity of uh, guinea sacks. And someone gave me a large quantity of uh, this netting that uh, looks like a fishing net, but it's made out of jute. So uh, the model came over and said, what are we doing today, Platt? I said, uh, jute. I went down to the basement and put all this jute, and uh, I started to wrap her in it. You know, uh, I didn't know where I was going with this, uh, but I did do a little research and found out the uh, jute, uh, I mean, they, they use it for everything because it's, it's strong as hell, yeah, but it itches. So I got into the material a little bit, and they even had a coat made, you know. But uh, while I was uh, working on, on the image, uh, I got into this thing, the spirit of the jute. You know, there's one image in the back where you can't separate the model from the jute. You know, but things like that happen only if I won the first one. You know what I mean? If you, if I see the spirit now, now I have something to work from. Usually, most of my work come from the piece I just finished. Then you intentionally you you make a change, or if you if you're up for it, if you're ready for for it to change, you uh, 
you can sometimes you can superimpose something, and that usually doesn't work. But you got to make the right change, and that's the nice thing about working you know, in the computer with the computer, because you can always backtrack without uh, going all the way to the beginning and messing up everything. I think a lot of prints in the basement, uh, just the ones that didn't work. And you know, our pack rats, you know, we don't throw away nothing because one day we're gonna come back and work on it. You know, that day never comes. <laughs> but uh, I want to draw on top of these things, you know, draw and paint on top of them. Uh, but then again, now you have something to work from, you know, uh, unlike uh, straight drawing and painting. I mean, face a white piece of canvas and you drawing and you're painting, that's, and you feel like you're starting from nothing. But uh, that's difficult, you know, but it's, nothing is there. But with a computer, uh, I'm, I'm, I know my problem started out with this image, this figure, and, uh, and usually it's the, the pose that the model gave me, or it's a non-pose pose, and it's uh, the place where I shot, and you just start to throw these things together, you know, playing around like, like you're just doing a collage. Uh, I would say today that if Romare Beard was living, uh, he'd be digital collaging too. Themes are, they come up, and they, they're usually based on traveling, a place I've been, or something I've seen. Uh, we did, we shot uh, The Divine Lorraine in Philadelphia. So that was about this, this basically, it was a grand hotel, grand, but it turned into a flop house. It was basically about putting life back in, into this, this place. I did um, the Eastern Prison in uh, Philadelphia, Eastern State Prison. And that again was about putting life back in. Um, went to Australia. The uh, art that you see over there, the Aboriginal art, it'll just take your heart. It's, um, you think you're seeing some here, but yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's Fascinating, and it's just dots. <laughs> you know, but it's more than that. You know, it's, it's history. It's everything. Um, that really fascinated me. Then we went to uh, went to Flint, Michigan, not too long ago, and uh, it was by luck. On the last day, I saw it. It was a abandoned um, mobile trailer home, big lot full of them. But that that to me that said that. That's Flint, because when the auto industry left, they just, and a lot of board up houses, you know, it's like St. Louis, you know. It's, so what I shot was these banded trailer houses, you know. It looked like a little, little treacherous up in there, so my wife didn't let me stay up in there too long. <laughs> but that's what this piece is. You know. And that the banded trailer houses, yeah, you know. To me, they were like uh, dreams got deferred. I did about three, three or four pieces uh, dealing with that, Flint, Michigan. And uh, it was just, again, when you walk up into the band and uh, you see couches and you, you see set, set designs. That's, that's what I saw. So I've, been, I've been playing with that. And, but this one right here, I just superimposed uh, like somebody's house right on my face. You know, just, I used to live here. That's how such matters come up, you know. You, I have to feel something. A lot of times the themes are a direct growth from the series I did before. Like, uh, before I got into this Pathfinder thing, I was doing time travelers, you know. And, uh, I don't know why at times, they, they, they seemed like they were just people who were going back to a place that they knew, or going back to, back to the place where dreams were deferred. 
And from there came Pathfinders. You know, as, to me, they, one grew from the next. I don't know what I'm going to do now. You know, it, but it's fun to get to the point where you don't know what you're going to do. You know, and, uh, that's the challenge. You know. So one series usually comes from the series I did just before. That. And then you add a change. something in the paper earlier. My wife read it. She, she talked about it. She was talking to an artist, and the artist, you know, basically almost the same question. He said he was born to do this. Certain things you just, you just know that this is what you're going to do. Uh, I decided I was going to be a professional artist when I was in the second grade. <laughs> and I just never stopped, you know. I don't have to prepare myself, you know. You just work. You just do it. It's, it's something that you, you've always done. I just do it automatically. There is, there is no preparation. It's, it's like eating. You know, you, I'm going to make something. Uh, something will go by. I'm going to read about something that somebody made, or uh, I'm going to find out some technical solution so I can make something better. Uh, always made things. Uh, if, if I really want to create something, uh, do art, it's, you just do it, you know, uh, it's, it's easy to, that's very easy to say, but it's true, just do it, you know, uh, don't wait on nothing, you can't wait too long. And the young lady right here, uh, the model right there, uh, Nietzsche, she, she does a lot of um, yoga and uh, she's a Buddhist, <laughs> she finally got rid of her kids, you know, out of the house. And I'm still half a good looking. This is the bucket list, I'm a model. <laughs> and she was came to the opening, she was just as happy as she wanted to be. She, she's on her way, but she, she has that spirit. She, you know, she's had the spirit, I'm gonna do something. I mean, you know, and that's what you do, it makes you feel good. If it makes you feel good and positive, do it again. You know, so I always wanna feel good. So I, you keep doing work, you know. You know what you gotta do. We all know what we gotta do. But we just got just got to do it. Try your best not to let anybody discourage you. you know, it's been my experience in the visual arts. There's always one parent to say yes, and other parents say no. You know, you can't make no money out of that. Listen to the one that says yes. But the reality, it is real. You can't make any money out of it. So both of them are right. But it's up to you to work it out. You know, don't let anybody stop you from doing what you want to do. Uh, even if you have to move, work it out. It, it's possible. Because uh, if you don't, you can be running around here talking about what you used to do. I mean, you ain't doing it. You know, so you uh, just do it. Like that. It's easy to say, but it's true. Just get off your ass and do it. Even if you. Second grade. <laughs> Boy, get off your ass. <laughs>